the first chapter of the actual products by Martin Brun Michelson. Yes, so um, first of all, yeah, I, uh, the first chapter of the pamphlet is called Basic Income, uh, a Stabilizing Driver. The point of the, the whole thing is that how basic income uh, can supplement and sort of um, re revisit the original conception of uh, the welfare states uh, as, uh, in a sense, uh, said by it too, that, that we need some vision and, uh, and the Nordic welfare state have been a very uh, great inspiration all around the world, so it's sad that that vision is losing ground, so maybe basic income can reinvigorate that vision. Uh, a short introduction uh, about me, uh, I have a Master's in Applied Philosophy from 2018 and have been part of the, um, and have been a part of the Danish uh, Bien uh, department from 2017 and have since become the cashier and I'm now also one other person involved in Nordic collaboration which of course is one of the reasons that I'm here and presently I work in software and freelancing and the chapter involves answering, trying to answer at least four basic sort of questions surrounding basic income as an introductory chapter and it is that basic income or what is it uh, how does it relate to the welfare state as said before uh, does it work does we have some proof that it uh, ha does it have a proof of concept and lastly is it fair what is some broad um, justifications for it in the context of uh, different ideological uh, perspectives in the nordic welfare countries so first, defining basic income, I would guess that most people, part of this conference, know it, but just as a clear reminder, uh, basic income is a universal, unconditional, individual basic income. Uh, that is an income given to individuals, uh, to all members of society as a universal, and it covers basic needs such as food, housing, water, etc. And um, one of the more um, discussed points, at least in the Nordic welfare states, is that it is also given without any formal obligations to the workforce, society, or anyone else. And um, it is also very clear that in this pamphlet, we in general support a basic income, that is that this definition cannot sort of be mitigated or reduced, or some of the points taken out, it is all of these concepts combined which form the basic income um, and other sorts of uh, areas would be sort of, the, yeah, yeah, it's a, a partial basic income, which is not really for the purpose of this pamphlet of promoting. So in the context of a basic, this is just the definition, but in the context of the basic income in a welfare state, uh, there will be some different levels of change which uh, will, ha will happen sort of in the welfare state and uh, what is important in the, the juxtaposition of basic income and welfare state. The first, on a very concrete level, is what will happen um, directly. And uh, directly, the changes would be primarily the benefits, subsidies, and the bottom part of a person's salary would be replaced with a basic income. Um, there are many ways of doing this, uh, giving directly social dividends, uh, negative income tax, uh, and other forms of as we would say in software implementation details, but the general idea is still the same as said in the original uh, definition. Uh, and also because there are so many benefits and subsidies and so on already uh, working in the current iteration of the welfare state, uh, it will only, there, there should only be uh, a, 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 a change in the taxation system to make this possible. Um, another uh, large change uh, is the conception of work, uh, which has been talked about a lot, especially in Nordic countries, and that is that will be coming a change from what uh, I write as state and market approved work to individual meaningful work. And what is meant by this term is, is that state and market approved work is the concept that to receive benefits today, you have to uh, have some work or seek some work which is state and market approved. That is that in the highest regard, we have full employment and in the next highest regard, we have part-time employment or uh, even in many cases, entrepreneurs and uh, other people like that. And in the lowest uh, regard, which is almost invisible, is this civil uh, work done by civil society and informal work, um, parenting and so on, which is almost 
uh, invisible um, Finland, almost the same uh, con con conclusions, small employment effects, better perceived economic security and mental well-being. And lastly, the ongoing program in Kenya, uh, which shows that the study document large pos positive impacts of cash transfers averaging $500 across a wide range of outcomes, assets, earnings, food security, psychological well-being, reduction in dom domestic violence, etc. And uh, of course, Kenya is still an ongoing project, so these are the preliminary results. Uh, it will be finished by 2028. So the general takeaway from all of these experiments is that basic income performs better than the current system, uh, primarily in two ways. Uh, and even if we remove all the moral obligations and moral uh, uh, views on it, in, it has this thing that purely from an economic perspective, it increases employment and it reduces health costs um, by a small and large margin, respectively. Um, so so it's, it seems to be working better than the current um, uh, paradigm. However, only experiments uh, have been done on poor populations. Uh, in, in, the, in all cases, it's uh, poor districts, except for Finland, it is poor persons which have been receiving the, um, the income. So in that regard, there, there is still this sort of lack of interest in basic income as an idea, but it's more seen as a tool to in, improve employment or reduce uh, the, the costs of health, uh, yeah, health costs. Uh, so, so these experiments primarily serve as a reminder that the poor population should in general be seen, deemed in higher regards than what is presently given to them in the current system, since that just by giving them the ability to be able to freely choose for themselves, in general gives vastly improved effects, in general give improved effects than, you know, motivating, as is the, uh, the, the framing of it today than by work, uh, work um, jobs and uh, by motivating them uh, by subsidies and other form of traditional uh, ways. And with this, um, by the end, I will shortly give a presentation of uh, the, the justification for basic income. And the liberal part of basic income is very uh, obvious. It has this uh, focus on independence. Uh, it has this focus on that uh, if you should be able to control what you want with your life. It, uh, and it also emancipates the idea of getting the fruits of your labor, as the saying is, um, by um, an often forgotten part about the saying is that in today's society, you need capital to even have a garden to work, it, work in, you could say. Um, so in, in that regard, it, it emancipates that uh, behavior. And from a more socialist or social democratic maybe perspective, uh, basic income uh, also emancipates a more solidary notion of uh, having this thing, which is at least in Denmark, it's a popular saying that everyone should get according to their needs and uh, supply uh, their work according to uh, what, the, what the abilities they have. And since basic income has in its term that it's a basic need, then everyone gets it because it is basic for everyone. Then it sort of also unites the whole, uh, the whole thing in a, in a more solidary um, focus on, uh, on what we should do with each other. And the obligation to do work will be a moral obligation, which people will do by themselves as shown in the, the pilots. There is no need for the state's uh, control to enforce that. And lastly, and maybe surprisingly even, um, basic income can also be seen as a conservative, in a sense, policy, since it, it has this notion in it that it sort of try, tries to conserve the general idea of the welfare state. It tries to pull it back to its roots, so to speak, because one of the very weird things that have happened in the recent years is that uh, all the Nordic countries are of the highest, uh, some of the highest in GDP per capita and human development index. However, with the neoliberal market logic saying that, oh, we should reduce uh, taxes over everything else, it sort of does not hold up that some of the highest uh, uh, developed countries and uh, some of the, the best countries from an economic perspective are also one of the ones with the highest tax burdens. So, so there is a sort of gap in why that that has even happened historically, uh, following the neoliberal logic. So, 
in that sense, basic income tries to pull back uh, this notion of uh, well, the welfare state, tries to bring it back to its root, which is basically to create the foundation from which people, no matter their circumstances of birth, can try to seek a meaningful life, uh, no matter in their, yeah, in their individual lives as well as in their communities. So that is, uh, I would say, the basic um, takeaway from this uh, uh, chapter. Thank you, Martin. Thank, thank you, Martin, thank you. very much. Great presentation.